Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, February 6, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. A quick diary today from Jesse, which is really a preview of work that he sort of started. And that's, well, how does exposing an email address to the public on a website affect spam received by that email address? And how various obfuscation methods kind of work and how effective they are. Again, this is sort of still work in progress. Just having the email as part of a web form that apparently only took two days to receive spam. Having an HTML comment with an email address, that took nine days. A simple obfuscation technique where Jesse just replaced the ad simple with the word ad in parentheses, that actually has so far been effective in stopping spam to go to that email address. Of course, maybe just a matter of time. As I said, this is still somewhat work in progress. Personally, I found it's uh, pretty much impossible to prevent an email address from receiving spam if you just wait long enough. Well, uh, we'll see how long it will take for that obfuscated email address to be picked up. And then we got a little bit more details about what exactly happened at any desk, at least uh, what was compromised. Apparently the attacker did have access to source code and also was able to compromise the signing certificate used by any desk in software it distributes, which means the private key was stolen. They now have used a new signing certificate. They have pushed that out and that was part of any desk initial statement and according to bleeping computer we now also have the serial number for the revoked or stolen certificate of course if you have older versions of the anydesk software you may be able to look that up yourself that's something to check for again there should be updated software with a new certificate there have also been some postings to a typical sort of credential sale websites that offer any desk credentials for sale. It's not really clear if, uh, first of all, these credentials are real at all or if they're related to the breach. Could just be uh, some bad guy sort of trying to basically get rid of uh, some old credentials they have collected over the years and using this uh, preach for more credibility. Of course, uh, we don't know at this point if these credentials are real at all. And late last week, Rapid7 published a proof of concept exploit and additional details for the latest Ivanti server-side request forgery vulnerability SAML component of Ivanti Connect Secure. Well, uh, this vulnerability is now actively being exploited as detected by Shadow Server. And well, the problem of deepfakes being used to exploit companies is becoming more and more real and also more and more obtainable for attackers. There's sort of two events that caught my eye here. One was a company in Hong Kong losing $20 million approximately, I believe, after a deepfake video call. I would compare this a little bit to sort of a business email compromise attack, just instead of injecting messages into the email chain, which of course tends to be much easier. This attack used an actual video call and a fake representation of a company's chief financial officer. Uh, Typically, sort of one of the business rules being established to prevent some of these uh, business email compromise type attacks is that you do ask for a phone call or even better, a video call to confirm a particular transaction. And this is sort of directly attacking this countermeasure that a lot of companies are relying on. 
Similarly, and this is something that I always was wondering how well it actually works. How do you remote verify the identity of a person? Some websites, in particular, I've seen this with crypto coin exchanges and, and such, they do require that you are submitting a picture of your driver's license or other ID documents. Well, uh, there are now, now a few different websites out there that are creating very good looking fake driver's licenses and passports. Now, this is not just sort of your simple Photoshop. Of course, that was always possible, but they make the overall image look pretty good by, for example, adding a carpet sort of as a background and the like. I think these IDs look really good and definitely something that a victim would easily fall for and actually journalists from 404 media did actually show that this can be exploited against uh, crypto coin exchanges and to make things i guess uh, worse uh, these ids are also relatively cheap going for about 15 dollars well uh, this is it for today thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow bye